Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you very much for this time you have given to us. And we're asking, oh Lord, you will bless all of us together this morning. In Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that this example of a praying youth that you are revealing to us today, we will follow the example. And then our prayer lives will change in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, pray. If you want to clap, if there is no le leprosy in your hand, no cro cro in your hand, you want to clap, you want to get and clap. Amen. You can be seated if you have a seat. If there is no seat and you are standing, you are lucky you are just like me. You are standing, I'm standing. I'm talking to you this morning on a praying youth. What a privilege that is. And a neglected privilege it is. Prayer can change anything. And prayer can change anyone. Think about anything in your life. That you want to be changed. Think about who you are. And you as a person, the totality of your life, the direction of your life, the vision in your life, the achievement in your life. Think about yourself as an individual. The prayer that you pray today can change you because prayer can change anything. And prayer can change anyone. Listen to this. It can change your dryness to freshness. When I talk about prayer, prayer can change your emptiness to fullness. Prayer can change your sadness to gladness. And prayer can change your bad luck to good luck. Prayer can change the curse in your life into a blessing. And prayer can change the sinner to a saint, prayer. It's prayer, listen, that brings the resources of heaven to meet the needs on earth. There's so many resources in heaven, great resources in heaven. And there are so many needs here on earth. And the connecting hand, the link that brings heaven to earth and makes us to touch heaven is prayer. Prayer brings the resources of heaven to meet the needs on earth. And in particular today, we're talking about a praying youth. In First Chronicles chapter 4, First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. Jabez. The mother called this name Jabez, because I bear him in sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel. That's, that means he prayed. That means he presented his case before the Almighty God. And this Jabez, born in sorrow, he cried unto the Lord, the God of Israel. And he said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil that it might not, it may not grieve me. And God granted him. And God granted him. And God granted him. And God granted him that which he requested. That means God answered his prayer. As you look at Jabez, and you look at the life of Jabez, and you look at the conception of Jabez, and you look at the birth of Jabez, and you look at the surrounding of Jabez, and you look at the situation of Jabez, there are three things to see. Number one, sorrow. Number two, suffering. Number three, shame. And because of his circumstances, and because of his situation, and because of everything surrounding him, sorrow, suffering, shame. He woke up in the morning when he was still very young. 
He looked at his circumstances. He looked at his situation. He looked at everything around him. And all he saw, sorrow, suffering, and shame. Until he began to ask questions from the mother. And began to say, Mom, what's the problem here? I look at my surrounding. I look at my situation. I look at my circumstances. All I see, sorrow, suffering, shame. And then the mother began to tell the story. The mother began to say the evil things that had been on her and her family before Jabez was born. In fact, that that was the very reason he gave this boy the name Jabez. Sorrow, suffering, shame. And then what will Jabez do? Before I tell you, I mean, I've read it already, but before I explain more to you about what Jabez did, I'm asking a question now. What do other young people do if they find out that their situation, their circumstances, their surrounding, everything is filled with sorrow, suffering, and shame? What do these young people do? Let me show you in Job chapter 21. Job chapter 21, verses 14 and 15. Therefore, they say unto God, depart from us. Uh, you know, those young people, whenever they find out, why is it like this with me? How is it before I was even born? My circumstances, my situation, my surrounding, everything filled with sorrow and suffering and shame. Why? So their attitude is, in this verse 14, they say unto God, depart from us. For we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. You know, they get angry at God. If you allowed that to happen to me before I was ever born, and all my surrounding situations, circumstances, everything, sorrow, suffering, and shame, get away from me. Don't tell me to come to church. Don't tell me to read the Bible. Don't tell me that you love me. Don't tell me you want to do anything in my life. Depart from me. And you know how many young people are like that? They just get angry at God. They get angry at the Bible. They get angry at the church. They get angry at the pastor. They get angry at praying people. They get angry at church people. They get angry at religion. They get angry about everything because see my circumstances. And then in verse 15, what is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? The attitude is prayer, forget it. Bible reading, forget it. Christian fellowship, don't talk to me about that again. Because of their situation and because of what they find on ground, the sorrow and the suffering and the shame. In fact, in verse, look at this in verse 11. They send forth their little ones like a flock. Their children dance. They, they take to dance.